Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a qualified expert in studying behavioural sciences, but particularly in animals. She actually has a PhD as an, and is on staff at the UQ School of Veterinary Science based out at Gatton in Queensland, where she has worked with her team for the last 15 years investigating what the perspective of a rabbit has to offer to us as humans. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Jenny Winter. Trying to understand each other's point of view has been an issue that humans have wrestled with since the dawn of time. It's the reason we have wars, it's the reason that we have disagreements, it's the reason that we push up against each other even in the family home. But what if, what if instead of trying to understand the perspective of our fellow man, <laughs> we decided to explore what we could learn about each other through the perspective of a rabbit. <laughs> well, today I'm very pleased to present with you some incredible findings that my team have made simply by putting ourselves in the mind of the humble rabbit. And I want to share with you some of those findings today. And I think the logical place to start is here. <laughs> Human communication. <laughs> have you ever had one of those moments, I mean, you may have even had them today, when you meet strangers, they try to make small talk with you, and it's almost like the elevated doors of your introversion <laughs> are trying to shut them out, but they will not stop coming. <laughs> Rabbits, on the other hand, they're not afraid of just letting that door close. <laughs> Without any self-consciousness, the rabbits just hit that close button and let the dice roll where they may. <laughs> now, when I was a little kid, I'll never forget a, uh, a special time that I had with my dad. And I think it led me to where I am today. Let me take you back. <laughs> That's my dad on the left. <laughs> he was a catalogue model. <laughs> and for many years, I was embarrassed by that. <laughs> Particularly because when kids would come over and see photos of him up on the shelf, They'd say, is that really your dad, or is that from Kmart? <laughs> and I became so obsessed with proving them wrong that I invented a fantasy land, a fantasy land where all the kids had dads from catalogues, <laughs> and where people could be as nice as animals. And that's what led me into veterinary science. Now, from that point, from that point, I became particularly fascinated with the rabbit. And you know why? Because rabbits, unlike people, will never do anything like this. Think about it. <laughs> Have you ever seen rabbits do this? Of course not. Humans, however, are the mere cats of the <laughs> conscious thinking world, always poking their heads up out of little holes to see what business is going on. Rabbits mind their own damn business. They burrow. They live in families. They get on with the important things, which is why they breed so much. <laughs> now, something surprising that you might not know about rabbits. 
uh, came to us last year. We were doing some experiments in good old Gatton, and uh, while we were there, a, uh, a special professor who was on secondment uh, from another university, which I can't name because of my memory loss, uh, <laughs> but on secondment, uh, he sent me a, uh, a postcard that he'd been given from his other university, and it sent my research on a whole other direction. Let's have a look at that postcard now. <laughs> He was very into stats. <laughs> and I said to him, Barry, <laughs> I don't know where you come from, literally, but <laughs> here in Australia and in Gatton, we don't have postcards with numbers on them. <laughs> and he said, no, Jenny, no. This is very important. 75% of animals don't enjoy rabbits. <laughs> I said, I do not believe that. I would like to see... He interrupted. He said, no, Jenny, 19% of animals do enjoy rabbits. I said, well, hang on a second. What happened to the other 6%? He said, we added that to 42%, which makes 48%, which is the number of hours it takes to digest that information. <laughs> you might be confused. <laughs> I was too. Then I, uh, I took this challenge to investigate these statistics and see if they were accurate. And sure enough, what did we find but this? <laughs> That's right, courtesy of Shutterstock, we discovered that the cousin of the rabbit, and in fact, the 19% of animals who do enjoy rabbits, were tree frogs. Your silence says everything. <laughs> it shocked me too. It shocked me too, but sure enough, as we examined, looking up from the fields where the little bunnies were jumping around, up in the trees nearby, their greatest fans, the little tree frogs, ribbit, ribbit. And we discovered that that we thought was always a call from frog to frog was in fact a call from frog to rabbit. <laughs> the rabbits. Thank you. It's exciting research. It is. I hope that this will spread from here today. And next time you see the humble tree frog, you'll understand it for what it is, which is half of a conversation being had with little Peter Cottontail. So, so what? What does it matter? What does it matter if, if, if rabbits are, are great friends with frogs? What does it matter? Well, let me tell you, I think it is all summed up by this. Impact. Impact. That's right. Now, impact's a word that gets thrown around a lot, but what we have discovered can be summed up with impact the impossibility of managing progressive animal communication tracts. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. We as humans get so stuck on the differences between us. We don't want to be friends with the tree frogs in our world, do we? Why can't we be more like the rabbits, have the perspective of an animal that is so open to life, it doesn't care if 79% of people don't enjoy it. <laughs> it focuses on the 19% that do, even if they're an entire different species. <laughs> I got another postcard recently from, uh, from my dear colleague, Barry, over in the University of such and such. And uh, he'd moved on from the statistics ones, and instead he sent me this. 
And I knew at that moment that he knew that I'd won that battle. <laughs> I'd proved his statistics wrong and yet so right. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. Uh, since I'm going to be retiring from my research next year, and I'm really looking forward to the downtime that that's going to present. I'm going to go up and I'm going to, I'm going to sit on a little ledge, <laughs> and I'm going to look out at the world, and I'm going to think about you beautiful humans and everything that you do, and I'm going to send you all the om energy that I can in the hope that you will become a little more of a cottontail and a little less of a meerkat. And when I do, I think you'll find this will be the result. <laughs> less arguing about vaccinations. That's correct. We will get along. And if that's not impact, I don't know what is. In closing, let me leave you with this final thought. As you leave here today, be the rabbit that you wish to see in the world. <laughs> Look for the fellow tree frogs amongst you. And above all, <laughs> respect each other's differences. Thank you so much. Thank you.